Hey guys, it's Rob the History Smith here with a different video for you today. This one I shot a little bit earlier, so I'm doing a voiceover on. What we're looking at here is what I would call a generic double barreled box lock percussion. The cool thing about these old guys is the way you load them, they're a little bit different than what you'd expect. They, they're not muzzle loaders. They're, um, they're technically are their breech loaders, but they don't take any sort of um, cartridge. What you have to do is unscrew the barrel, as I'm doing it right here. Normally these would come with a tool back in the day uh, to allow you to do that, but these gunsmithing kits, you'll find something big enough. So you would unscrew the barrels to load this, as so. And as you can tell, you're not doing this in duress. Now that that's off, you would load powder into the front of those um, little holes and in the ball behind it and you'd screw the barrel back down and you are loaded to go. But since this gun has some serious issues, I have to completely disassemble it. So the issues I'm dealing with here is um, one of the sears does not hold um, when, the, when the gun is cocked, which is frustrating to say the least. Uh, and there's some cracks and dings here and there that need a bit of attention. So disassembly on something like this is uh, quite straightforward. These are not terribly complicated. The only thing that comes to an issue is uh, the spring power. So you take the two screws out and you will be using screws on these old guys. They're not they're not military. They don't have springs and catches and all sorts of cool little gadgets to hold the things together. Uh, there are some pins. There's that magnetic tray. Um, big mistake, don't use those. Uh, I, 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 I thought they were cool but they suck your parts up and you don't ever see them again. And you wonder why you've lost a tiny little part because it got stuck to the bottom of the metal thing and <clears throat> there you go. All right. So that pin there is holding the two uh, hammers in place. And that's what makes something like this a little more difficult be simply because um, you're working on two parts at the same time and you have to depress both springs at the same time. And you'll see a lot of fiddling on going here. Um, but that pin there is actually not a pin, it's a screw, it's broken, it needs to be replaced. It's one of the issues this firearm has. So, uh, electrical tape, what do I have electrical tape for? Uh, what do I have pliers for? Because I'm going to torture somebody and remove all their teeth. No, uh, the, pli the, pli pli the pliers are for compressing the springs. The tape is to make sure I don't mar the surface, so I'm going to wrap the teeth, the jaws of the, uh, the vice grip in place. Uh, I like the flat ones. For something like this, it's not the maybe maybe not the best, but uh, it's the closest I can find that will give you even pressure on both. But pressure, sorry, on both. Okay, you don't need to see me wrapping this. So there's gonna be some edits here. How does my hairy arm look? Okay, we're all wrapped and ready to go here. Just lowering the jaws to make sure they, they you know, clamp properly. It takes a bit of a guess. It's a little, it's always scary working on something like this because the springs are so old. Um, they don't like to be messed with. And in order to get something like this off, you have to compress the spring further than it would normally be compressed. And if there's any sort of faults or errors or aging in this spring, your spring's gonna pop. And when your spring pops, you are in serious uh, trouble. You, you, you're pretty much out of luck. You got a wall hanger at that point um, because finding a new spring, you're not going to. Even if you could find whatever this pistol is and get the spring out of it, it's not gonna fit. These are all hand fit and you're gonna see uh, through this whole process here, assembly and disassembly on this has become uh, a major aspect to, to try and fit and everything like that. It's 
tension's not quite right. I can either do two things at this point. I can either clamp the clamp further down, or in this case, I'm just moving it further up the spring. Um, you know, the fulcrum, all that kind of stuff, right? You guys know old fashioned rules. All right, I believe I'm reaching for a punch here. Punch in the hammer. The springs are compressed, so this way when I take that, um, well, what was a screw out, it's not gonna fly too far apart. It flew a little bit apart. Um, the other key thing I, I found about this too is you don't want to take that vice grip off. Uh, you want to leave those springs intact where they are as long as you can because get everything lined up backwards afterwards and, and uh, reclamping without, without everything being held in place is tricky. Just making sure what's going on because what's happened here is because that first hammer popped up a bit, it's not allowing me to get the punch lined up uh, with the second hammer easily. There you go. You can see that popped a bit more because that pin's coming out. There you go. The pin is out. But there's still a bit of spring pressure, so. There you go. One hammer out. Just making sure I'm not doing any damage. Go slow. So what's happening is the hammer's being pushed up a bit still by the spring making these a bit difficult, so a little more punch. That pin should pop right out and the hammer should be free. There you go. Hammer free. Springs are up a little bit higher than I would want. Sorry guys, that was my chair. So what I have to do now is make a new screw. And to do that, I am going overboard and going with a lathe when I really shouldn't bother be doing this. But, hey, I just got the lathe at this point and I want to play with it. Have an excuse because you don't want to spend a thousand dollars plus on a lathe and then uh, have it sitting there like a giant paperweight, do you? Hey, this is boring, isn't it, guys? My next video will be watching paint dry. So now the, the pin has been case hardened and cleaned up a bit and we're ready for uh, some reassembly. But I have not addressed the sear yet, right? So this is the whole test, retest, test, retest. In this case, I don't need to put the hammers in to test it. I just want to make sure it goes through, doesn't stick out too far, the threads engage properly. And that's a nice, solid, locked-in bar. That's not coming loose unless you're using a screwdriver to get it out. So what I'm doing now is I'm removing the triggers. There's two of them. They're both unique. And the reason why I'm using removing the triggers is because on a gun this simple, the sear is attached to the trigger. There's no transfer bar. There's there's nothing there, so you got to get the triggers out. And you can see they're actually quite flat, and uh, they're different lengths. They're both individual. It's you know this, these things can be a bit of a nightmare, to tell you the truth. So here I'm going to try to show you a bit how they interact. So 
so that what the sear does is it holds the hammer back, right? It, it's it's um, kind of straightforward. And when you pull the trigger, the sear slides out and the hammer falls. Now the problem anytime you have a sear, and particularly a worn sear, is um, it can drop unexpectedly. Uh, if it's a negative, if it's just worn like this, uh, I can tell you one thing that's going to come into factor in that movie, uh, the, the case with Alec Baldwin in Rust, because somebody modified that sear on that pistol. Uh, I know it's not out in the press, but I can guarantee you somebody modified that sear to make it a light trigger pull for the actors. And they probably put a negative um, camber on it. So the a negative and a positive, if you guys want to see what that is, check out my P53. Um, repair video because it had a, a sear issue similar um, and I went in with the microscope and did a better view there. So you do a little bit of work on a sear, you test it. So what a negative sear means is the hammer um, the, the slope that the sear is sitting on wants to pull the hammer forward. Uh, let the hammer drop by itself. goes without saying a hammer that's pulling a trigger by itself is inherently unsafe and a negative sear is what you really want a negative sear is interesting because um, you'll see the hammer cock back a little bit as you pull the trigger um, and you'll feel the the trigger weight build up and that's an important safety feature um, and it's not a feature as in oh we want you to feel the trigger weight it's a safety feature in the sense that we don't want the gun to be able to the hammer to be able to drop all by itself, or or the striker to drop all by itself. Um, but too much of a, a negative sear. Um, if you guys want to see, there'll be a video coming out about my Martini Henry, where I'm working on that. And at one point, uh, during the early parts of the repair, I have too much of a negative uh, camber on it, and pulling that trigger is like 50 pound weight. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I keep it like that, it would wear the gun out and, and break parts. So, um, too, too negative, it creates too hard of a um, trigger pull. Neutral, neutral is kind of what it says. It's neither good nor bad, uh, but ultimately it's not ideal. Ideally, you want that negative. A positive, um, you're asking for trouble and it should be interesting to see the rust case because that gun didn't wear out um that as far as i know it didn't wear out it was could have been very easily modified which is i think most likely i'm sure they're going to try to say that it's natural wear but if you're a gunsmith and if you're a gun owner if you're an armorer the responsibility is on you to make sure your gun is safe especially if you're doing something in public like a movie it is completely your responsibility to make sure your firearms are in good working order. You take a firearm to a range and you shoot the guy next to you because you've been messing around with your sear. I can tell you one thing. You're not going home that day. <laughs> you're, you're getting a charge. Um, and, uh, and that's the not fun side of firearms is there's a huge amount of liability. But that's the price you pay. It's called being a responsible gun owner. You're liable for what you do. So the issue I'm having here now is those little guys there, they are the trigger return springs. And again, this gun is made out of iron, not steel. So it does, it does not stay hard. Um, and it's you think iron and steel, you think, oh, iron is hard. And you think steel is hard. What's the difference? Um, at a glance, at a touch, it can be hard to tell. But when you ever work on steel or iron, you'll find that um, steel will move. If you tap steel, it will dent and move very easily. And over a year, just years of pressure on that return spring, um, it has softened up the inside of that so much that it will now uh, won't won't hold the spring in place. It's. I wish I could explain it better than that, but that's what it is. So I'm I'm still working on that sear, making sure that um, when I pull the hammer back, it stays back. And more importantly, if I tap it, it doesn't drop. If you tap your hammer and it drops, you have a positive sear. You are in trouble. That's that's the first check. If your hammer drops, if you push the hammer forward or just tap it lightly and it flies forward, um, do not use the gun. It is unsafe. Remember what I was just talking about seconds ago? You're liable. Don't be an idiot. Uh, do the right thing. 
you wouldn't drive a car without brakes. You shouldn't drive a gun with a broken sear. Or uh, you would would you drive a car with broken seatbelts? You might. Should you? No. It's like a safety. Like you know, safeties are like seatbelts. They're almost optional. But if you don't use them and something goes wrong, you're to blame, right? So use your safeties. Use your brain. Sorry, this is turning into a lecture. I don't know what's going on today. I can tell you one thing, though, that should be interesting. I'm working on a course for um, high school students, or possibly even younger, on um, the idea of uh, gun safety and gun culture. Um, if you live anywhere in this world, you know there's a constant um, perpetual... Um, concern over safety, be it guns or comic books or knives if you're in England, um, or Americans if you're in Afghanistan. Anyways, that's a joke. But what's not a joke is education. And I don't mean education as in, like, this is how you shoot a gun. I mean education as in what causes, um, what, what causes the problems um, we see with um, not just teenagers, but teenagers, young adults, and, uh, and to a degree, adult adults. Why is why is there so much um, gun violence? Why is a gun uh, the solution to the problem, as opposed to the police or um, doing nothing? Anyways, guys, I'm not going to go on about that. That's a different subject altogether. I hope to uh, pitch that to some politicians here in Toronto and actually make a difference in the community. Um, and it's not going to be a pro-gun. Um, thing, but I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, hopefully, I'll get some videos of me in the future actually um, giving the speech to uh, a class or two. All right. What I'm doing now is that spring is still giving me an issue, the, the trigger return spring. So now I'm going to put a shim in there to get more tension on the um, on the trigger itself, so the trigger will, re will return properly. And th that trigger return spring not only holds the trigger back, but it it biases the trigger... Um, uh, well, it pushes the trigger forward at the, at the base where your finger goes, backwards above the pivot point. I, it, sorry, guys. I wish I could explain it better, but all I'm doing is just putting a shim in there and pushing that spring back. Part of that that case I was talking about there, the um, the the iron case is worn out, and I just need to uh, get something in there to fill that gap. In this case, uh, I have a pile of shims. They're ten bucks. Um, get a couple. They're they're pretty good. They're often uh, a spring steel, so you can use them for leaf spring, um, feather springs, not leaf springs. Uh, small stuff like that and of course filling in gaps so once I get this um, in place I'm just going to use some acro glass and, and uh, glue it in place you're not going to see it it's not ideal uh, I mean if you're going to do it ideal you'd probably get a welder out and actually drop some extra metal back in there and then grind it back down but in this case uh, it's good enough again it's not a pistol you're going to be shooting I would never risk my hand to something like this this is even in its day this would have been iffy but you know hundred years later, 150 years later, um, it's beyond iffy. It is downright dangerous to fire these things. So I, I knew a guy who blew his hand off with a shotgun. Well, probably, uh, I wouldn't say his hand. Uh, what would it be? Three-fifths of his hand? <laughs> Get it? Blew his three fingers off. Um, he was holding an old shotgun by the, uh, by the, in the breach area, and there was a black powder... Damascus uh, barrel and he didn't load his own ammo somebody did and they figure somebody overloaded the ammo blew the breach out and took his fingers off and it, this guy wasn't young he was a retired veterinarian so and the best part is he told me afterwards his his girlfriend won't allow him to fire guns older than World War One, and I don't think he wants to <laughs> considering he only has what seven fingers left I don't think he can but he's a nice guy. Unfortunately, these things happen. Um, you don't think they're going to happen to you. It's like everything in life. You don't think it's going to happen to you. But um, roll the dice often enough and you're going to lose. All right, we're back to reassembly here. 
In this case, I'm just going to hand tighten the barrels. This is an example of everything is handmade. If you notice that barrel going on was a bit wonky and you can't swap the barrels left or right. It has to be the right barrel or the left barrel because they'll knock into each other. Oddly enough, that that, that oblong uh, wobbling you see there. So another reason why not to trust these things when they're brand new. That didn't happen with age. There you go. Two hammers back. Drop one. Drop two. Cock them again. Drop the left. Drop the right. And we are done. <laughs> Thank you.